right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with today's webinar talking about the future of remote site access and virtual site monitoring. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, real quick, some housekeeping items before we dive in. First of all, if you have any questions related to today's topic uh, and what we're talking about, feel free to use the Q&A button on your screen. Our team will see those and we'll answer those towards the end of today's talk. If you have any technical questions, use the chat button to let our team know. The video, or sorry, the webinar is being recorded and we will send out a recording of this towards the end of, uh, end of the day today or early tomorrow that you can send to colleagues or rewatch any particular areas. So with that said, we are gonna go ahead and dive in and I'll introduce the team here on the call in just a second. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the future of remote site access and virtual site monitoring. And as we dive into this, we're gonna launch a poll real quick that you should see on your screen now, uh, just to kind of set today's context. So if you have any specific feedback, give it there in the poll and we'll make sure to incorporate that, incorporate that throughout today's conversation. Where we're headed today is we'll first start off with welcome and introductions, let you know who's on the call, who we are as a team, We'll then talk a little bit about the state of remote site access and virtual monitoring, what's happened in the last three or four months. We all know it's no surprise that there's been a massive shift towards remote site monitoring, remote site access and virtual monitoring. So we'll dive in a little bit of that shift and what it looks like for now, as well as what it looks like for the future. We'll talk a little bit about the two solutions represented today, which are both industry standard for remote site monitoring, remote site access, Florence and Vertrial. We'll talk about the two platform there. And then we'll end with some next steps in Q&A. On today's call, we'll all wave as we're staring at you from the videos here, uh, is Ryan Jones, CEO of Florence. We have Amanda, who's Executive Vice President of Virtual Trial Solutions for Vertrial. Myself, Blake Adams, VP of Marketing for Florence. And Mr. Jarek Frost, who's Head of Virtual Presite at Vertrial as well. And so you'll hear from all of us throughout today's conversation. But to preserve bandwidth on all of your computers in case you're watching from home, we are going to turn off our video for the time being. We'll come back at the end with video as well, uh, but we'll continue the conversation now. So we want to dive in with talking about the acceleration of remote site access and virtual site monitoring. What's changed? How fast is it changing? And really thinking about what does that mean for the future of clinical research operations? Well, back in December, we asked a question to research sites and sponsors, how important are these things for you over the next year? And the question was, what percentage of the activities will be more than 50% digital in three years? As you can see, it was a big trend towards a lot of this becoming digital. In fact, 62% of sites and sponsors said, we expect monitor visits to be completely digital or at least more than 50% digital in the next three years. But at the same time, again, in December, 2019, there wasn't a lot of urgency to make that a reality. So those same exact respondents, only 6% of them said that creating remote site monitoring and remote site access was a priority headed into 2020. Well, obviously we all know that that's changed dramatically. Fast forward four months, and these are some of the things we're hearing. And I wanted to add one thing, and then Amanda from Virtual is gonna share some of what they're hearing. Just yesterday, one of the attendees on today's call mentioned that even a major clinic in the U.S. has said even post-COVID now, we plan on not allowing remote monitors or, or sorry, sponsor monitors back on site and we're going to be going fully remote. So Amanda, with that said and setting some of that context, what is it you've heard at Virtual as well? Yeah, and I do, I do want to acknowledge, Blake, that I realize everyone's already aware of, you know, the disruptive effects brought on by COVID. We're still living with the disruption daily. Um, but really, you know, the big thing you hit on is the inaccessibility of sites now and still in the future. And this affecting patients, CRAs, and uh, overall business con continuity for all trial stakeholders. Um, but I am the forever optimist and want to say, you know, is there a silver lining? And what we've experienced in our work with sites is they're overwhelming response to quickly adopt new technology solutions um, that allow virtual access to their sites. And not just that, but you know, uh, this is a risk averse industry and, and their CRO and pharma partners alike are really welcoming these new solutions with much happier hearts. So what, one, what once was the risk to the trial is now really viewed as the essential and the exact risk mitigation strategy to overcome this inaccessibility. So I'll get back to you, Blake, to show uh, how we move forward with this. Yeah, absolutely, Amanda. Thank you for that. Uh, so as we think about what that means for the industry, the, the boilerplate point is, if you walk away with nothing else from today's talk, is you must be actively building a remote site access and virtual site monitoring strategy today. And that's true both for sponsors and CROs when they think about accessing sites, 
as well as for research sites when they think about building a technology infrastructure that allows them to enable remote site access and remote site monitoring. And so as we got together and started thinking about this presentation, we really talked about what are the four areas of monitoring typically throughout the life of a study. We go from site selection to site initiation to interim monitoring and to close out. And as we started talking about those four crucial components to a study, we really said, hey, at the underlying foundation of all of those areas of monitoring are two key elements. One is the site visit, group meetings, inspections, and the documentation that goes along with those visits. And the second is site document data and task management as it relates to regulatory source documents and other documents in that wheelhouse. And so we said with those two ideas in mind and Florence and Virtual both being the industry standards for that, what does the future remote mon of remote monitoring look like when you think about how those particular areas are gonna look? And as you can see here on the right side with Florence, and then I'll hand it over to Amanda to talk a little bit about Virtual. Florence is the industry standard for handling remote site access of documents and data, source data, et cetera. In fact, over 7,200 sites, we will dive into in a second. So the future of that looks like remote site access of management of site documents and data, remote review, QC and collection of source data, reg binders, CRFs, pharmacy records, et cetera, and assigning and monitoring and managing site startup, study and quality control tasks remotely and in a virtual environment. So Amanda, with that said, you know, Virtual obviously covers a different half of this coin. What is it that Virtual really thinks about when they think about the future of these monitoring visits? Thanks, Blake. Yeah, and, and it's quite amazing the complementary nature of our two companies and the reason for this partnership. So uh, we will get into our powerful technology a little later in the deck, but what we really do is complement that remote accessibility that Florence provides to site documents and data and the real powerful workflows behind your system, uh, we complete the entire visit loop uh, by facilitating really the full in-person experience virtually through our proprietary technology. So we have uh, proprietary glasses and our core telemedicine solution that allows everything the CRC uh, th is seeing that the CRA also sees streamed live in HD on their computer without having to physically travel to the study sites. So in summary, if I can put this in, in concise words, we have, um, you know, Florence's remote site monitoring capability plus virtual, Virtual's virtual site monitoring capability, which results in an end-to-end -end, uh, monitoring visit experience. Amanda, I had a, to build on that, I had a conversation with a clinical operations executive last week that said, you know, let me make this simple. In a world where site, physical site access is uncertain, I have two problems. I have a content access problem and I have a people access problem. And echoing your enthusiasm for the, our two companies working together, Florence is you know, we see ourselves as the best in the world in solving a content access problem. But until Virtual came along, no one was solving the people access problem. And uh, it really, it feels satisfying to put those two tools together. Absolutely, share your enthusiasm. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, that's great. And thank you both for sharing some context there around what this looks like and why our two solutions are really talking about this today. And so we did want to spend some time, as promised in the webinar uh, invite, talking a little bit about these solutions. I know this is a really uh, new concept, but at the same time, it's not a brand new concept. Remote monitoring and remote access has been talked about for years now. It's been tried and attempted for years now. And for the most part, as we can tell and as we can see from the disruptions that COVID has brought, it's just not worked. Uh, and so what is it that makes what we're talking about now different than what's been pursued over the past? And that's what we wanna spend a little bit of time talking about now. And so Florence is gonna launch into this by talking about that content access that Ryan mentioned uh, and really how we power virtual site collaboration with remote site access and doing it on the number one electronic investigator site file platform and research. A little bit of a context here into who Florence is for those who may not be familiar with our solution and our platform and our network is we have four key areas of, of products. First is for research sites. We started as a research site organization and we have an electronic investigator site file that's the number one in the industry for managing regulatory contract SOPs, e-consent, as well as thinking about e-source from, uh, from a site side of things. 
But then on the flip side of that, because we have that level of access and trust at the research sites, we have the proven software solutions that are implemented at research sites. We provide remote monitoring and remote access for sponsors and CROs. And we are the largest platform in the industry for that remote site access. At the same time, for many sponsors that are looking for an electronic trial master file that comes built in with that capability of remotely accessing sites, we bring that capability with Florence ETMF. And finally, we do have e-consent for patients as well, as I already saw one question about consenting, so we'll dive into that at the end of today's conversation. And again, Florence is a global research network. We have a little over 7,200 research sites in 27 countries that use our platform to manage their content, as Ron mentioned. And we have hundreds of sponsors and CROs who both access those existing sites on a daily basis. In fact, last month, over 2 million monitoring actions took place on the platform to review those sites and review their content, as well as pharmas and CROs who partner with us to deploy the solution to other research sites to enable remote site access. And so Ryan, with that said, and setting some context there of the story so folks get an idea of where we're coming from, can we dive in a little bit, and I'll let you take us through it, of what exactly that framework looks like and how we enable that remote content management and site access and monitoring? Yeah, thanks, Blake and Amanda. Um, what we'll share with you over the next five slides or so is how we've been interacting with sponsors and sites to the tune of about 2 million remote monitoring actions a month. And like uh, we discussed in the beginning, um, Florence is not good in everything, but we're, we're pretty darn good at allowing connectivity around the content that's created during the course of a study at a site. And whether that's uh, focused on the, the patient-oriented content, SDVs, EHR records, lab reports, or whether that's focused on the regulatory content, that next ring around, uh, around the patient data that ensures that that study is valid. And the way that we've been able to do that is we, we built, built software that lives at the site that supports this 5C life cycle that you see in front of you, creating the space and the content for the site to use as the sponsor, distributing that content out to the sites, allowing the sites to complete it in the tools so that they're not doing duplicate work. So, so a site isn't com completing a delegation of authority log on paper and then having to scan that in so it can be consumed remotely or completing a 1572 or CVs, things like that. And then becoming the single version of the truth for checking that content, for managing a remote monitoring visit around the content. And we think that this 5C framework forms a content foundation for the virtual visits that take place through the virtual platform. And and that's the, the two layers of the sandwich from our perspective. So let's dive into this from a uh, sponsor's perspective to start the cycle. As noted, this is a tool that lives at the site and the workflows were built for sites first. We're a six-year-old company. For, for most of that time, we were wholly focused on making workflows easy for sites and making them feel like paper so that uh, the adoption of a digital technology as a repository for their critical content didn't feel like a a, a radical shift and, and that's proving to be really valuable as we're trying to go fast and helping. Uh, we have about 70 COVID studies that are run across our platform right now. Uh, but with that as background, what, what actually is this thing? Well, the first step of creating an EISF to allow remote site access is building a document structure that lines up with either industry reference models like uh, like uh, the reference model or the MAGI site model, or a, a taxonomy that makes sense for the sponsor. And that not only means building folder, folders and naming conventions for documents that will end up there as uh, managed by the site, but it also allows you to program the study for the tasks that you're, you're expecting your site partners to do. So you can have due dates based on the SIV for all the content that needs to be created to make that a study of success and you can see uh, some of those icons here, tags to run custom reports, indicators of whether documents have been signed electronically, that sort of thing. And once the sponsor uh, creates that space, the sponsor can also create the, the templates of the documents for consistency across the site. 
So for instance, we have an electronic delegation of authority uh, log tool that can be turned on by a sponsor and provided for use for that site for the duration of the study uh, so that they're not constantly managing versions of documents and instead they're taking what used to be a paper process and they can do it wholly digitally. And this works for logs of any description as well. So we're taking care of the, from the most basic setup, do I have a container to put the documents of the study to more sophisticated things to set up? Can I, can I migrate DOAs to a, a digital platform with templates? Then it comes time to circulate. So, you know, traditionally sponsors would set up rooms where they're assembling three ring binders or digital rooms where they're assembling digital versions of those and then dropping those three ring binders into FedEx boxes and sending them all around the world in order for this, the site to begin assembling content for the study. Um, through our digital binders, placeholders, fillable forms, and logs, we can allow that to be done centrally. And instead of creating 100 different work streams for 100 different sites, you do it once and you can distribute that content and get startup done faster. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Um, another part of uh, if we could migrate from circulating that content to now I'll put my coordinator hat on and it's time to complete content so that it's in a place that's always ready for remote inspection. Sp sponsors or sites can set tasks for themselves so that teams can be on the same page about when content is being created, either for regulatory or source purposes. Um, and so uh, a, a sponsor or CRO can manage centrally and track how uh, work is getting done during the startup part of a, of a study. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and then it, then it comes down to creating the content. If I'm a coordinated site, I have a, a few different choices. Starting with, I can take pictures with my camera phone. I can scan documents into a scanner and, and upload them into the tool. And the tool has provisions for certified copies and for version control so that uh, both sites and sponsors together understand the pedigree of those documents. Next slide, please. And that is true both for regulatory documents like the CV that we were displaying, but it also holds true for source documents. Um, there are some sites out there that all of you know, uh, that you know that where source monitoring hasn't been a problem, they provide remote access to their EMRs. But if you're running an international study where EMRs are not the norm, or you're running into sites where EMR access is still a thorny issue, um, there's still a material portion of sites that don't have a, a, a standardized way of getting you content in order to do uh, source data verification. And that means uh, collecting content from EMRs, from paper uh, CRFs, and perhaps from e-source devices. And then controlling that in a way that's respectful uh, to HIPAA, to GDPR, uh, to the pro uh, privacy shield, uh, and allows control over who gets to see that, both being PHI aware as well as enabling different blinding methods. All that's built into the EISF to think about that from the start, rather than it being an afterthought or being wholly under, uh, uncontrolled if you're using a tool like Dropbox or some other uh, non-purpose built solution. Next slide, please. All right, we're almost at the end of our journey. We've set up a space to allow remote collection of documents across all the sites in a study. We've now followed the site creating that content, whether it's a log, 1572, whether it's scanning and uploading documents. Now it's time to develop a remote monitoring cadence around that content. And as we'll hear in a minute, uh, that cadence can be developed so that the people tasks that Vertrial helps with can be done in parallel or asynchronously, depending on your uh, uh, monitoring protocol, with the content task, which is where Florence helps with. And Florence, for sponsors, has a tool called eHub, which allows the sponsor to buy and distribute EISF licenses out to all the sites participating in a study to create a monitoring cadence and rhythm around all the types of content that you see on the right hand side. The ereg content captures from EMR, emails and email attachments, uh, electronic consent and, uh, and other source documents. And once, um, once that infrastructure is there, next slide please, 
uh, we create x-ray vision into those documents. So from a, a single place, a monitor can sit down and look across all the studies, and, and for this, in this case, a leukemia study, across all the sites that are participating in a study and see with x-ray vision into those site folders what documents have been uploaded, what documents are missing, due, expired, which ones are waiting on signatures from the PIs at those sites. Because electronic signatures are built into this tool, not only does that make it easier on the site to get the signature done, it also allows centralized tracking of what work got done. And that holds true not only for the reg uh, content, but also for S, uh, uh, source data verification and review, uh, where that can be done in a controlled way that respects both the laws of the countries, and, and Florence is uh, deployed in over 30 countries worldwide, so we've studied those, uh, as well as uh, the operational requirements like blinding for the, for the sponsor. Um, Last step, we've focused mostly on can you just get access to the content at the site in order to have monitoring visits that meet the quality requirements of your study. But there's also the risk and the chaos that can come from pulling back that content out of the sites back into a TMF or whatever uh, content repository you're using for the study. And so build into uh, high quality EISFs will be uh, an API connector to your ETMF of choice and a workflow that irrespective of the structure that that site is working with, will get that document into the right place back at, at, uh, back at, the, at the home base uh, using a tool that can also allow comments and queries so that when you're reviewing a document, it acts a little bit like digital sticky notes. So if, if you're not ready to pull it back to the TMF and you need to work with the site on straightening out errors in the document. That all happens in one place and everyone gets the same uh, view of the truth. Um, and with that, I'd love to turn it over to uh, Derek and Amanda to talk about uh, now that we've helped a little bit with the content part of remote access, how does Virtrial help with the people part of remote access? Great overview, Ryan, thank you so much. Um, yeah, Derek and I are definitely very excited to show you a glimpse uh, into our really first of its kind technology and how it complements Florence's content monitoring capability by enabling virtual site visits for a true end-to-end -end site monitoring solution. So if we go to the next page, great. Uh, so let me start with a, a brief overview about Vertrial. Our technology and services are powered by the industry's best-in-class telemedicine platform. Um, the platform itself has been in use in healthcare for seven years and supports over 45,000 traditional telemedicine visits a month. And as such, it's been tested and proven by real-world healthcare clinics of all shapes and sizes, from small clinics to large hospital and academic facilities, as well as uh, providers of all specialties have utilized it. So what we've done is add to that telemedicine expertise, uh, a leadership team that led the growth and, and to which was ultimately the largest site network in the world of 200 sites across seven countries. So what we have with this is the result of a technology that is not just a technology, but is both site um, and patient, as well as clinical research friendly. And our two core services uh, provided by that telemedicine um, platform are one, uh, remote patient telemedicine visits in place of in-clinic visits. So uh, accommodating patients uh, in a remote fashion to have access to research sites without having to go to the clinic. <clears throat> and then in the instance here, allowing remote clinical research associate visits. Um, and we, we initially called the service virtual pre-site as we were focusing on solving the need to reduce the uh, industry's lengthy startup timelines that are typically associated with pre-study visits and site, initi site initiation visits, um, and really by trying to create a more efficient clinical research associate. Um, but what we came to find quickly is uh, industry has demanded many more use cases that expanded beyond just pre-study visits, uh, site initiation visits, uh, as you're hearing in this presentation today. So uh, let me hand over to Derek uh, to show you the magic behind uh, what this technology can do. Derek. 
Thanks, Amanda, uh, and also to, uh, to Blake and Ryan for having us on today. Um, since we're doing pretty well on time, I did want to pause and just take a moment to thank everyone who's joined us uh, again for the webinar today. We know that, uh, that time is a, is a valuable commodity, especially for us now as we start to build our strategies for the future, and, and we're all just incredibly thankful uh, that you took the time with us today. Hey, Derek, since you, uh, since you took a pause there, I did want to reiterate, if you've got questions, we've had several come in, feel free to use the Q&A panel, and we will answer those towards the end of today's conversation. So, Derek, sorry, I'll hand it back to you now. No worries at all. Uh, thank you for that. And so if you haven't noticed by now or you don't know us, either of our companies, uh, well enough by now, um, and we know many of you do know us and we talk uh, consistently together, but uh, you're really talking to two companies that at their core understand the value of the research site in our industry. We recognize for us, it's the flywheel of everything that happens in clinical research. And so our two companies are highly focused on building tools that can make our sites more efficient. Uh, you know, and when we look at the delays that are happening in trials today, we, we certainly have to recognize how COVID has affected that flywheel of our study system. Uh, as you can see here, it's left research sites around the world almost completely inaccessible for sponsor monitors. And as many of us know, uh, patients as well in our studies. Uh, but long before COVID struck, we started asking the question, so why do we have to ship monitors around the world to conduct every startup and every monitoring visit? Can't we find a faster and more efficient way to do this using technology and ultimately avoid the delays of, of, of physically being on site? Uh, next slide, please. And here's our answer to both of those questions or both of those issues, if you will. Uh, the advent of virtual site monitoring. This is a new way for sponsors and CROs to manage study uh, site startup, interim monitoring, uh, and study closeout. So by using our patent pending HD video glasses that you see here on the right of your screen, paired with our trial telemedicine mobile application that Amanda referred to, now a site coordinator or site staff can stream literally anything they view at their site back to a remote sponsor monitor who's watching live from the comfort of wherever their laptop and internet connection is, safely, securely, and 100% compliant. Uh, next slide, please. And so just a little bit more about how it works. Uh, so we, as you can see here on the right, we've got examples of our virtual pre-site or virtual site monitoring hardware kits that go out to sites around the world in place of monitors or CRAs going out to sites around the world. Uh, and we provision and package this hardware on behalf of our sponsor and CRO partners for every study monitoring visit. You'll see that it includes our glasses, that it includes a smartphone device. I'm sure, I think we've got some Q&A around uh, compliance issues and, uh, and we, we own all of the hardware and we ship it back and forth to sites. So they're not uh, using any of their own hardware, but rather our hardware that's in that compliant environment. And then we take the time to teach monitors and sites how to work in this new environment, how to conduct a virtual site visits, virtual site monitoring visit. So we're all used to using platforms like Zoom now, but what happens when you need the tools to be 100% compliant and in the right environment? Uh, and what are some of those features that you really need to make sure we have to make things that don't impede the existing workflows for both coordinators and monitors, but enhance them and make them more productive? Uh, and as I mentioned, we then ship these kits out around the world to sites. Uh, and today we are shipping these kits around the world. As you can imagine, we've got, uh, you know, quite a high demand with so many sites that we can't access. Uh, and so what we've told the industry is uh, you, can, you can leave your monitors at home uh, in a secure place for any number of reasons that you would want to. Let us package these kits and ship them to your sites and we'll keep your studies on track. Uh, next slide, please. So although we, we never will and never have claimed that we're here to replace all traditional monitoring visit types, because we're certainly not, um, the reality is we can be used for some component to most components of any traditional monitoring visit. Uh, so whether we're talking about site selection visits, having the ability to do live video site touring with our HD video streamed back to the monitor uh, so that they can document in the visit as you see here on the right, uh, with the computer screen, uh, very specific to that type of visit, very specific to that sponsor, very specific to that study. Uh, and then by doing this, they have a real-time post-visit uh, report that comes out 
from everything that they captured. Uh, we can talk more about that in the future. Uh, but then when we move into site initiation visits, how can you build a tool that's, that's compliant, can keep everybody in the same space and ensure that multi-participant training uh, is capable? So think of, of pairing together a, a Zoom video that we're on right now where we can share our documents together, but then imagine someone, one of the participants actually wearing our glasses and looking down and touring around the site during the course of that visit. Uh, and if you have to do any types of hands-on training, physically being able to do that at the site level as a, as a component of that remote visit. Uh, and then of course, any type of touring that needs to happen during the initiation. Uh, for interim monitoring, now the majority of that source data verification and interim monitoring work is happening through the power of something like a Florence Healthcare uh, and more and more so now. But what happens if you need to do some accountability spot checks? What happens if you need to interview PI and staff before, during, or after the course of an interim monitoring visit? That's when our glasses and our kits go back out. That's when you uh, then again access the, the ability to be live at the site and see exactly what, uh, see exactly what the coordinator sees. And then all, we, we, sit, we find ourselves all the way through closeout visits. So uh, when we've got to go back and do a final inspection of study supplies, uh, inventory and document storage and even drug destruction. How can we be there? How can we make ourselves virtual and be there remotely in person uh, without having to physically travel there? Well, again, this is the answer. So to the right, you see in the, the view of the computer screen what a, a sponsor monitor sees during one of our visits. And then over all the way to the far right, you see the reality for the coordinator. So the coordinator has the view of everything they need to see on the mobile device that we provision. Uh, and send out uh, and, and they can be included with the rest of their staff who also may be remote in many areas as we see many times today, accessing from, uh, from their computers as well. Uh, next slide, please. And so just to take, uh, take a little bit of a breath and pause as we go into the next uh, part and kind of the rounding the corner of our presentation here. Um, again, I can't stress enough that uh, that, uh, that, that we're not here to replace the traditions uh, of, of study site monitoring, but we're here to create the future of study site monitoring. Uh, and, and hopefully we've been able to demonstrate how across any of these traditional monitoring visit types, and as Amanda mentioned, many other types of scenarios we're being asked for. Um, Virtrial is giving you that ability to be fully virtual, to be fully remote, and to access these sites. And Florence, as, as you've heard and learned, uh, is giving you 24 seven access to any of the site documentation uh, and collaboration that needs to happen around those documents and tying into those multiple systems. And so uh, thank you again for the opportunity to show a few of those slides and talk to you about virtual site monitoring. And, um, and I'll actually pass the baton back to Amanda. Um, Amanda is gonna talk a little bit about some of her unique experience uh, actually from the site level uh, for decades, which is at the core of what we do and how this really creates some stakeholder benefits for everyone around our continuum. Amanda? Thanks, Derek. Yeah, we certainly hope that everyone's enjoying what you're seeing so far with these uh, really, truly complementary services of Florence and Bird Trial. And, and as we can see, it, it certainly serves an immediate need. Um, but we also want to take a moment and consider some of the long-term benefits that we may find for all key stakeholders. So, you know, in the sites uh, world, um, they can continue to thrive through the pandemic today uh, by having, you know, being accessible to the multiple uh, stakeholders, patients, and sponsor monitors alike. Uh, but in the future, um, really maintaining uh, site importance in the clinical research ecosystem as studies move toward decentralized models and staking their, their claim into that space um, as, as participants. Um, from a sponsor level, um, obviously the immediate, the immediate uh, benefit is to keep studies on track today. Um, but then, you know, the, the goal is to begin to gain quicker data insights in order to make faster decisions. Um, and then, you know, in the CRA, CRO space, uh, a really immediate benefit is to differentiate uh, through these efficiencies. And um, in the future, again, you know, one of our focuses is on that uh, very long startup uh, timeline. 
and and CRA fatigue because of all the travel required to uh, to monitor sites, get them started, and get them trained on studies. So overall, there's uh, benefits both immediate and long term for all of our stakeholders. And Blake and Ryan, um, like Vertrial, I know that uh, Florence has a very successful track record in working with sites and taking a site first approach. Uh, so I wanted to, to hand over to you to talk a little bit more about how you've managed to be successful with sites. Yeah, thank you, Amanda, for that and for diving into a little bit of the, the value of this long term, not just in, in mitigating COVID disruptions, but really what the next three, five, 10 years of, of uh, monitor visits and monitor access looks like. So Florence and Virtual combined do, do have a pretty significant global reach, as mentioned earlier, global infrastructure uh, with a little over 30 some odd countries represented on our platforms uh, collectively. And when we think about success, as Amanda mentioned there, uh, and I kind of mentioned at the earlier today's conversation, there have been attempts at remote site access, remote document management in the past, but there's been a lot of failures in that area too. And the primary failure that our team has really honed in on through talking with these 7,200 sites on our platform is that none of the res or none of the solutions were designed from a site first perspective. They were all designed for the sponsor. They were extensions of sponsor software they were really add-on and bolt-ons to what the sponsor needed to get their work done. And the sites revolted, for lack of a better word, against that and said, no, this is not something we wanna use. We don't wanna be forced to use these structures and these infrastructures that don't cater to our needs. And so at Florence and at Virtual, we really pivoted that conversation and said, all right, how do we approach remote access, remote monitoring, virtual site monitoring from a different perspective? And these four key elements are what we find really ensure success and help you avoid failure, especially as there's a rapid pivot to this kind of environment and we need to get set up quickly. You know, Florence right now, we recently got about 18 international sites set up in three days for a sponsor on, uh, on a remote document management platform for compliant remote SDV and remote monitoring. And so the way we did that and the way Virtual does that as well is focusing on a site first solution. So making sure that the site is at the center of the roadmap, they're at the center of feature designs. And for sponsors, sometimes this is a little bit scary, but when you think about the benefits of saying, hey, we're gonna cater to your sites so that your sites have an excellent experience and has ease of use there on the second side of things that there's proven site adoption. Again, lots of technologies out there right now talking about remote monitoring, remote site access. Very few of them have proven adoption at the research site over years of experience. Also committed to site success. Virtual mentioned how they really spend time helping to onboard the sites with their solution. Florence does the very same thing. We have a dedicated site support team that you hand your list of research sites to and we take care of getting them set up on the platform, getting them trained, getting them onboarded and running support. Someone asked in the Q&A what kind of language support. Florence has support available in eight different languages and we always add more as sponsors bring in new languages that need support. And finally, global compliance. This was talked a lot about in the Q&A as well and ensuring that the vendor and solution is compliant with the basics of CFR 21 part 11, HIPAA, but also is extending that to HITECH, Privacy Shield and GDPR compliance, especially as you think about SDR, uh, source data review and source data verification internationally. What does that look like from a GDPR standpoint? Are there servers based in the right location to manage that data securely? And so that's something again that Florence and Virtual both spend a lot of time on and we definitely know is, is a, when when it comes to getting sites connected to the ecosystem. And so Ron or Amanda or Derek, before we, we dive into q and I don't know if you have anything else to add from your experiences in helping to get sites and making sure it's a site first strategy uh, to talk about here. Yeah, I will add one more thing, Blake. Thanks for the offer. And there are a ton of great questions. So looking forward to getting some of them answered. Um, but to your point of you know working with sites and making sure that uh, we're taking a site first approach. Uh, Virtrial early on last year uh, offered a uh, basically virtual trial capable training uh, program and it, it's a very brief training uh, program but it's it's meant to you know when we're talking about decentralized trials and all of these remote and virtual elements uh, we're, we're asking them just like we did in the way uh, in the era of EDC 
uh, to take a significant leap into something new. And that's from going within the four walls of a clinic uh, to virtual environments. And so our intent with that is to get them ready, get them a tool that uh, not only, not only you know, gives an overview of the technology, but what are the uh, what is the good website manner as opposed to bedside manner? We know coordinators, we know physicians take amazing care of patients, um, but what are those necessary etiquettes when you're you know in a virtual clinic? So that training is provided, and and that's what was reflected on the map. Uh, overlap uh, from the slide before, and, and it's global. We know that sites are ready. We know you're being creative. We applaud you for that. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, this, this whole COVID situation has really given uh, sites uh, a way to adopt these technologies with less resistance uh, from their sponsor and CRO uh, partners. So a round of applause to the sites. Uh, we love working with you and, and keep, keep uh, being innovative. That's great, Amanda. Well, we'll switch gears here. And we did want to highlight, you know, there's obviously two ways to get in touch. We, we barely scratched the surface of some of the capabilities of, of both of these solutions, as well as really thinking about strategically how you make sure these are a success. And so again, to talk about remote site access strategy when it comes to the content side of things, regulatory source consent, uh, et cetera, info at forensehc.com. We can answer those questions for you. We can give you a little more of a deep dive demo. Uh, and if you have questions about what Virtual talks about from virtual site monitoring, virtual site visits, and all of their particular capabilities, email them at bd at virtual.com. Uh, we'll turn back on our videos now if everyone's still on there. Hopefully it's not just me that pops on a video and, and everyone can stare at me, but we'll take a little bit of Q&A now. And again, I'm gonna leave this slide on the screen so you can find those emails. We'll also be sending out a video recording and some additional ways to follow up. But a lot of questions came in. Uh, there's a lot of actually a little over 30 some odd questions have came in thus far. So obviously we're not going to get all of those in, in this little bit of time left. A lot of them are related to some compliance questions. A lot of them are related to some deep technical questions. Our teams will reach out to you and have those specific conversations because it's probably too much for all uh, 400 some odd people on this call to listen to. But we did want to get into some of the more generic questions that are applicable to everyone uh, on the call. The first question we got, and Ron, I'll bounce this one to you. If a sponsor needs to be able to access, we showed a redacted version of source documentation. If a sponsor requests request or, or needs access to unredacted PHI, is that a possibility in the Florence platform? Yeah, our, our, thanks. Our, our concept is that uh, we create a content infrastructure having thought through all the different GCP requirements for moving content around, which means a uh, sponsor can select uh, uh, configurations from it being totally open and everyone seeing everything about every document to in the middle having rules about these people see these things and these people don't to having everything very, uh, very locked down and there are audit trails and audit logs for permission changes that, that track all that. So yeah, you can, you can do whatever you'd like. We, we wanted to show uh, some of the redaction capabilities, but that's not the only way to do things. That's great, Ron. And one other question that came in, re not related to that, but I was just going to answer real quick. Uh, one of them was, Derek, you shared some stats earlier about inaccessibility of sites. Uh, I know that I think the, the source was on there, but I just didn't know if you wanted to re-highlight where you found some of that data for those maybe interested in diving in a little bit more. Yeah, sure. And thank you for that question. Uh, that was actually uh, data that was pulled through uh, a, a bit of a survey that IQVIA did with all of their sites globally. Um, and that was, uh, the, the source there was a little bit gray at the bottom, but um, that's data directly from IQVIA a few months ago. That's great. Uh, Ron, we had another question, uh, and I, I'll answer this one, I think, but feel free to dive in. Someone asked, you know, for academic medical centers running a lot of investigator-initiated studies, obviously the, the, the ROI may not be there, the ability to invest. And at Florence, we actually do give away our solution to investigator-initiated studies free of charge. Um, so if that's you and you fit into that category, feel free to reach out. Our sales team will help drive, uh, drive that conversation from an investigator-initiated study standpoint. Um, Real quick, there's a lot of questions on here about security. Obviously, as we think about HIPAA, about PHI, about all the various security, we talked a little bit about it. So maybe these were before we kind of got to that compliance section, but just at a high level, Ryan, and then Derek, I think as well for your team, Ron, how do we ensure security from a GDPR HIPAA perspective on our platform? And then Derek, you know, at a high level, we'll, we'll hand that off to you. And then the specific questions about seeing patients and things of that nature, we'll dive into more on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, with everyone after the call. 
Yeah, and I think I think some of the, the mo I'm really um, impressed by the way that our virtual friends have thought through some of these issues around accidental, uh, you know, viewing of things folks shouldn't be viewing, that sort of stuff. For us, it's a little more boring, and maybe when it comes to security, boring is good. Uh, we have, you know, nearly a thousand protocols running on the study, and we've been through the ringer with uh, dozens of sponsors to make sure that we aligned with their security goals. So, you know, the notions of being encrypted in transit and rest, disaster recovery plans, being aligned with Annex 11 and Part 11, uh, thinking globally about how to bake those things in the tool, uh, we're just lucky that we've had enough years to grind through it and get it right. That's great. Derek, I don't know if you have anything to add to that as well from your end. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and from our side, you know, we didn't get it really a chance to touch on this much, but our, our company, Virtrial, is really the, the combination of uh, many years at the site level in research experience, but also combined with a lot of telemedicine experience. And our platform is actually built from uh, an architected telemedicine platform that had been in the space for over seven years in the healthcare space. And it is because of that, we, we started HIPAA compliant, high tech, SOC 2, GDPR, uh, and all of those compliance and certification measures are there because we understand what it's like to have patient data uh, in and out of our system. But I'll, I'll just touch on uh, a couple of points there. One was, I noticed a question about well, what happens if someone sees something in their view along the way. Keep in mind, this is the, this is the same experience that a CRA would have on site, right? They have to be the CRC and the CRA have to be careful about the things that they're reviewing for different types of visits for uh, SOP reasons. Uh, but one point is uh, we are, we're not, as a standard measure, we're not recording any of the audio or video that's happening over the course of, of one of our uh, monitoring visits. But in the, in the rare case that we do come across patient information, rest assured that our, our platform is HIPAA high tech, GDPR and SOC 2 compliant. That's great, Derek. Great, great, great answer there as well. Uh, we'll do one or two more, and I know there's a lot of them on here, so we'll, we'll try to answer those via email after the after the fact. And if you have additional questions that maybe weren't addressed here, you can always email either of those uh, either of those folks there. Uh, real quick, you know, obviously we talked a little bit about site adoption, or, and Ryan, I think this was kind of in our section, but there may be some virtual overlap here as well. Will it not be a challenge for site staff, site staff to scan all of the essential documents to upload into the Florence solution was kind of the question. And I think that mimics virtual as well when it comes to how you guys handle to monitoring visits. So Ron, I know uh, you talked a little bit about content creation and really getting to that point in Florence, but anything else you would add there about experiences we've had of sites who've had to make some of that transition? Yeah, I love it. I think one of the things that virtual and we have focused on is how do you uh, integrate this new reality into the same work that had to get done anyway? And our platform can be used to upload content that was created outside the tool, like in an EMR or on a piece of paper, sure. But what we've invested in is giving the sites the tools to create the content for the first time in our tool. And so it's no new work for them. If they're creating, filling out a form, or doing electronic signatures, completing a log in the tool, you have to complete it somewhere, why not complete it in the place where everyone has the uh, same view of the truth access to it? Uh, Amanda and Derek, I, how, how do you guys think about reducing, reducing workload? Yeah, I'm happy to, happy to take that as well. So uh, remember that uh, our big promise here is we, don't, we can't slow down what's happening at a site traditionally. We can only speed it up. That's our, our only focus. And I know there was another question that came in about, well, what's really the time commitment for, for a CRC? Do they have to be available for, for these entire uh, uh, monitoring visits? And I'm not sure if that was positioned towards Vertrial or Florence specifically, but on our behalf, um, continue to think about the experience as when a monitor is with a CRC side by side at the site, touring the site, that's when our glasses um, are, are being utilized. Now, if someone chooses that they want to maybe spot check something in addition or, uh, or potentially, you know, look live at a document or something like that, then there may be a little bit of additional time for, uh, for site staff in, in that um, regard. But the reality is if you think about all the time that a site, on our behalf anyway, in virtual, that a site spends scheduling time with their monitors, scheduling time with their staff, having their, welcoming their monitors on site, having you know, lunch, provision, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of that is, is not a, a part of the component anymore. So in many cases, 
there's, there's much less work to do around the administrative burden of a monitoring visit using the virtual technology. That's great. Well, we'll try to wrap up here. You know, we got several questions about support and obviously both of our solutions do provide direct site support 24 seven. So we're always available to help sites out. And that's part of what makes us unique is we're really focused on that site, uh, that site experience for you, the sponsor CRO, as well as for sites who use our platforms, especially Florence with the EISF or eConsent or, or any of those type solutions. We're there to support. We're there to help you out. So we'll finish, we'll go ahead and wrap up today. There's a lot of questions that we'll get to via email, but I did just wanna highlight again that this is not something that's going away. It's something that really you need to get in place today, uh, both to mitigate COVID disruptions as well as to think about the future. Uh, both sites are saying, hey, we're changing the way we operate with how monitors visit us. Sponsors and CROs are thinking about how they're gonna reinvent the way that they monitor. And so I encourage you to go ahead, even if it's not quite on your radar tomorrow to take care of, go ahead and reach out to either of us. We'd love to just think about a strategic uh, strategy for that. We can talk with you about what some major sponsors and CROs, as well as some small sponsors and CROs are doing to create this kind of strategy and what they're putting in place. And if you're a site on the conversation or a site on today's call, we'd love to dive in too about how you can make sure your site is equipped both from a Florence perspective with the infrastructure to enable remote work for your teams independently and also for remote monitoring. And then from the virtual perspective, we got a couple of questions about the training Amanda mentioned earlier. If you want to be trained to kind of be virtual capable as a research site, that's also something that we'd love to talk with you about. And so we have solutions ranging for sponsor CROs and sites on the call today. Feel free to reach out. We would love to have that conversation with you. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll send out an email with a recording that you can pass along, rewatch, as well as a couple of additional resources. Uh, Derek, Ryan, Amanda, I want to thank you all for being on the call with us today and, and having this conversation. So thank you all. My pleasure. Thanks, Blake. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, everyone on the call. It was yeah, a pleasure. Thank you for your time. Yeah, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again on a future conversation related to this topic and other topics. Thank you.